Prepare to meet the most terrifying creatures. With four pairs of legs, a tubular mouth armed with stylets which can pierce its prey, and resilient to all sorts of stressful conditions. Bit of UV radiation? Not a problem. Bone chilling cold temperatures? Also not a problem. They can even survive the vacuum of space. There's only one slight problem. Tardigrades are microscopic. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, or should I say, the Spooky Science Show, as because it is the beloved Halloween special. And as evident from my intro, we will be talking about tardigrades in this video, otherwise known as water bears or moss piglets, described by some as a cross between a caterpillar and naked mole rats. Well, they're hardly names that will fill you with fear, and I actually think they look quite adorable, especially when they're drawn like this. So maybe this is the not so spooky science show today. Anyway, it is kind of creepy, or at least a cool creepy, how they seem to be resilient to so many things. So as a bit of fun, I thought I would elucidate some of these features and underlying mechanisms of how we think they work so far, also covering a recent study that seems to pull apart how they can survive UV irradiation. And the reason why this research is so fascinating is because we can potentially learn from these mechanisms mimic them for therapeutics, to help grow plants on extreme conditions, and well, to just learn some really awesome biology. So to break this video down, I'll begin by just giving a generic what are tardigrades overview, and then we'll look at what makes them special, covering a variety of different features that have been noticed so far, and then going into a bit more detail regarding this recent research and their tolerance to ultraviolet radiation. And then lastly, we'll address why should we actually care about the tardigrades? So first then, what are tardigrades? Well, they're invertebrates belonging to the phylum tardigrada. And currently it's estimated that there are around 1,300 different tardigrade species. As you can see here, they're closely related to arthropods, which include all the crustaceans and insects, and also nematodes. And the tardigrada phylum itself can be split up into two different classes, U tardigrada and heterotardigrada. U tardigrada consists mainly of freshwater and terrestrial species, whilst heterotardigrada include more marine and terrestrial species. And the tardigrades can be found all over Earth, from the deepest oceans to the tops of the highest mountains. And although tardigrades are microscopic, they're surprisingly complex. They have a digestive and nervous system, albeit not as quite complex as ours. And they also have sensory organs, including eyes. But if our digestive and nervous systems are more complex than the tardigrades, what actually makes the tardigrades so special? Well, all tardigrades need a thin water film around their bodies in order to stay active. And whilst that might be fine for those in marine or freshwater environments, those in terrestrial environments are threatened by drying. However, tardigrades have a special skill Tardigrades can enter into a state known as the cryptobiotic state, and there are several different types of this cryptobiosis. This includes anoxiobiosis, which is a lack of oxygen, where tardigrades are known to swell and become rigid, cryobiosis, which is really low temperatures, and osmobiosis, which is changes in pressure, and also anhydrobiosis, which is due to a lack of water. And so during these extreme conditions, cryptobiosis is induced. So cryptobiosis can be thought of as a metabolic state enters by an organism in response to adverse environmental conditions that prevents reproduction, development and repair, but enables the organism to survive so that when the environmental conditions return to normal, the organisms can return back to its metabolic state of life as it was before cryptobiosis. So anhydrobiosis gives the tardigrades resistance to lack of water. And in addition, it also helps the tardigrades deal with high temperatures, radiation or different kinds of chemicals such as ethanol and carbon dioxide. One anatomical transformation seen in some tardigrades during this state is the formation of tan, which is when the tardigrades reduce their body surface area, which helps to reduce water loss through evaporation. And this is because water is super important for organisms. In particular, in cells, water helps to maintain the proper structure of different proteins and different macromolecular structures. 
also including DNA. Inevitably though, the tardigrades are going to lose some water, but they also have mechanisms to circumvent this loss. Firstly, they can produce trahalose, which is a sugar compound that can help to replace the lost water and act as a bioprotectant. But that isn't the only mechanism. Tidigrades also produce heat shock proteins that help to prevent proteins from losing their structure and aggregating together. In addition, tidigrades have their own unique genes that include the production of soluble proteins that similarly are thought to form molecular shields in water deficient conditions. And interestingly, a more recent discovery of a tidigrade unique protein is that referred to as DSARP, standing for damage suppressor, and it is so named because it is thought that this protein can bind to DNA and prevent it from damage. And this protein was first discovered in the tardigrade species, are you ready for it, Ramosotius phoreonatus, apparently one of the most stress-tolerant tardigrade species. And what they found in this study was that DSARP could suppress X-ray-induced DNA damage by around 40% and it also suppressed damage induced by reactive oxygen species. And the coolest thing is that they also put DSARP and they expressed it in human cells. And even in the human cells, DSARP was also shown to have protective benefits for the DNA. And it was in this follow-up paper where they further characterised DSARP where they saw that it actually binds to chromatin. And they state as well in this article that with this insight, DSARP could be used to expand the range of applications of cells in biotechnology, and it could also increase the effectiveness of current methods, such as the production of some pharmaceuticals that depends upon the use of cultured cells. So it's pretty cool that a protein from tardigrades can have relevance in other areas of research. And just while we're still on the topic of DSARP, it's interesting to think about why tardigrades would need this protein. And so one argument would be that this protein is made, as I just mentioned, to protect DNA. But the interesting thing about tardigrades is that they're somatic cells, so their normal non-sex cells are eutelic. So what that means is that after hatching, those somatic cells don't divide. So maybe the integrity of their DNA isn't as important. However, in my opinion, DNA is always important. If you're going to be transcribing genes throughout a lifetime, then it's integral to also maintain the structure of DNA, irrespective of whether or not that cell's actually dividing. And this brings us on to the more recent publication that was found in a species of tardigrades in the Eutardigrada class that found that naturally occurring fluorescence of this tardigrade, paramacrobiotis, protects the tardigrade from ultraviolet radiation. And so this slightly takes us into the realm of physics and the energy of different waves, with ultraviolet light having very high energy. And so what was seen in the study was that these tardigrades have the capability of transforming this high energy ultraviolet light into harmless blue light. And it is thought that only tardigrades that have these fluorescent pigments are able to do this. And this can be seen in this figure here, where you can see the tardigrades on the left that is hypopigmented. You can't see any of this blue light under UV fluorescence. However, the tardigrade on the right that has got a lot more of these pigments, you can quite clearly see the blue light under ultraviolet fluorescence. Pretty cool. But the really neat thing they did in this experiment was extract these fluorescent pigments and then coat C. elegans, so these are worms, in this fluorescent pigments. And what they found was that the worms that had been coated in this fluorescent extract survived much better after UV radiation exposure for 15 minutes. And whilst this research is really exciting, it would be much more cool if we could actually identify what these fluorescent pigments are and how it's encoded within the tardigrades so that it can be used in different applications. And this is kind of a reoccurring theme with a lot of the adaptations of tardigrades to extreme conditions. We can see what they're doing to circumvent stress in these different conditions, but we're not so sure about how they are able to do this and the biochemical underpinnings. This knowledge is really important for taking the cool biology from the tardigrades and applying it to novel situations. This includes being able to improve growth conditions of different crops in extreme conditions, such as on Mars, if that ever happens. And it could also help to protect workers from radiation and nuclear facilities, as well as improving our understanding of signaling mechanisms within cells that could be useful for developing therapeutics for cancer and ageing. And the ever-rapid advances in genome sequencing 
will help to advance the research into these thousands of species of tardigrades. So I hope in this Halloween special-ish, I have treated you, not tricked you, with some knowledge of tardigrades. And as always, thanks for listening.